I, I went into the apartment. I'm kind of going in slowly and I look around the corner and out of the corner of my eye, I see a shadowy figure in the distance down the hallway. So I was living in Cincinnati, Ohio a few years ago and the funniest thing happened. It wasn't funny at the moment, but I lived in this really terrible neighborhood. One of those places where you hide your kids, hide your wives. And uh, I, I rolled up, it was really, really late at night, rolled up into my parking spot, got in my car, you know, I'm heading to my apartment and I noticed the door is cracked open. So, you know, I'm thinking, all right, if if this is about to go down, it's about to go down. I'm ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? So I'm getting all worked up. The adrenaline's pumping and I open up the door. I start walking into the apartment. Now, you got to understand the layout. So I had my it was about as big as like a matchbox. I had my couch right here. There's a little closet right here. And then there was a hallway that went down to my bedroom. So I went into the apartment. I'm kind of going in slowly and I look around the corner and out of the corner of my eye, I see a shadowy figure in the distance down the hallway. And my, I just, I jump out of my skin. I wish I would have went Blackie Chan and I would have had all my moves ready, but that's not what happened. I fell back into the couch and as everything came into focus, I realized it was a mirror hanging on the door at the end of the hallway. I was actually afraid of my own reflection. I think a lot of times that's what happens with fear. We have all this anticipation built up in our mind. We have this huge scenario that has unfolded with really just a little bit of information. And when we finally see the illusion for what it really is, it was just us. I think that a lot of times our fear is misplaced faith. We have our faith misdirected. We have faith and confidence in ourselves. We have faith in what we're worried about actually happening. We have faith in the negative as opposed to the positive. When really, if we would turn this scenario around and put our faith in Jesus, we would realize that there is nothing to be afraid of. That God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I didn't really deal with fear and worry a lot growing up or even being an adult until I had kids. Now I've got three little boys under five and for the first few years of their lives, everything is like, oh my goodness, what could happen? And a lot of my prayers are being driven by what I hope my kids avoid. But I always pray this prayer over them every night. I pray. God, keep them from danger, but make them dangerous. I always want to not just speak to my fears. I want to activate my faith and what I believe God is able to do through them. I've realized that whatever I lay awake at night worrying about are the places that I lack trust in God. Whenever you have a worry or whenever you have a fear, you can pinpoint this place and take it captive. That's what the Bible teaches us to do. That's our main line of defense against fear is to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. When we take the thought captive and make it obedient to Christ, we say the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary was enough for me to live in faith, not die from fear. Jesus died so that we could live in faith. So that would be my encouragement to you. Take your fears captive and make them obedient to the victory of the cross. Mm -hmm.